Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a 2017 Japanese fantasy and science fiction movie called Full Metal Alchemist, adapted from a renowned manga series of the same name. The movie begins with two brothers, Ed and Al, and their mother, Trisha, living a normal life in Resembol. The brothers self-learn alchemy and happily showcase their abilities to Trisha. Unfortunately, she dies due to illness. At her grave, the brothers talk about homunculi, artificial humans created by alchemy, and wonder if they can bring Trisha back using their alchemy skills even though it is considered taboo. Sometimes later, they find a way to bring back their mother by human transmutation. They gather all of the materials needed and then perform the ritual to bring her back, but it goes wrong not as expected. Al is carried away by the storm surrounding them and is severely injured. Years later in real, Ed chases an old man seemingly carrying a philosopher's stone. The man puts up a fight by utilizing the stone's powers to awaken stone giants and manipulate matters to hurt Ed, but Ed insists on getting the stone. He performs alchemy, or transmuting, without a circle, which amazes the old man. Ed summons a giant spear and skillfully defeats the stone giants. Al, now a man in a hollow armor suit, joins him. The old man recognizes them as Full Metal Alchemist brothers, then runs to a more crowded part of the town and threatens a girl's life. Ed and Al fight him until his stone breaks off, but it is taken by Colonel Roy Mustang, the fire alchemist. He burns the stone, proving it to be a fake since a real philosopher's stone will not break. He instructs his men to take Ed to East City headquarters while Al stays behind to repair the damage caused by the fight. Unbeknownst to them, a group of mysterious people in black clothing are secretly watching them. While Al repairs the town and interacts with its people, his longtime friend, Winry, shows up and greets him. In East City headquarters where Colonel Mustang questions Ed, Ed states that he is determined to find the real Philosopher's Stone to retrieve Al's body, despite state military's rules that forbid performing alchemy on humans. Ed's friend, Captain Hughes, suddenly walks in and introduces him to his superior, General Hakuro, who is eager to meet the brothers. Later when they walk together, Hughes and Ed meet Winry, who is surprised to see Ed's broken automail prosthetic limb. Meanwhile, General Hakuro tells Colonel Mustang that he wants the brothers to be introduced to Tucker, who may aid them in their quest to find the Philosopher's Stone. Back in Riol, the old man carrying a fake Philosopher's Stone turns out to be working for the mysterious group of people, consisting of lust, envy, and gluttony. They seem to possess inhuman abilities and murder the old man. Meanwhile, Ed, Al, and Winry are invited to dinner at Captain Hugh's house and are warmly welcomed by his pregnant wife, Gracia. Hughes even allow them to stay overnight. While sleeping, Ed experiences a nightmare, a reenactment of the disaster he and Al caused when trying to bring back their mother. Turns out the disaster cost Al's soul, then Ed is transported to another worldly place called the Gate of Truth, guarded by Truth, a form of mysterious being. Based on the alchemy rule of law of equivalent exchange, Ed must trade something in exchange for him to learn about human transmutation, in which he traded one of his legs. Learning that Al's soul is also compromised, he traded his right arm for Al's soul and binds it to a suit of armor. He wakes up with Al by his side, knowing that his brother has the same nightmare again. The next day, the brothers are escorted to meet Shu Tucker, the Sewing Life Alchemist, who successfully transmuted a talking chimera two years ago. The chimera only spoke three words and then died. While Ed and Tucker have a serious talk, Al and Winry play with Tucker's daughter and dog, Nina and Alexander. Tucker learns about Ed's sacrifice, his attempt at human transmutation, and his quest for the Philosopher's Stone. Tucker also explains that his evaluation as a state alchemist is coming, and he is stressed out by its preparation. Though he is not sure of the stone's existence, he suggests Ed see a missing stone researcher named Dr. Marco, last located in Barnes. Ed and Winry leave while Al stays behind to be examined by Tucker. During the train ride to Barnes, Ed and Winry are enjoying Gracia's apple pie while Winry suddenly notices a man resembling Dr. Marco. She quickly jumps off the train even though they are not yet at Barnes, then chases after the man. Marco attempts to attack them, thinking that the military is after him. However, he stopped attacking soon after and warns Ed to not chase after the stone, even though he is determined to find it. They are surprised by Lust, who appears from behind and skillfully attacks Marco. Lust attacks Ed and Winry too, but decides to spare their lives, then quickly disappears. In his last breaths, Dr. Marco gives Ed a stone to transmute the Philosopher's Stone and says that he can find it in lab number 5. Ed quickly heads back to Tucker's residence while Winry stays behind to report Marco's assassination to the military. While Ed and Winry are away, Tucker examines how Al cannot feel pain and is unsure whether the talking suit of armor is actually Al's soul. 
he thinks it is a soul implanted with false memories, believing it to be Al, since he underestimated Ed's capability to perform transmutation on the human soul. When Ed arrives back at Tucker's, he notices the house feels empty, with Nina and Alexander nowhere to be seen. He meets exhausted Tucker who finally completed his experiment of talking Chimera. Ed notices the talking Chimera resembles Alexander while uttering Nina's words, then deduces that Tucker experimented on Nina and Alexander's lives. Tucker claims that he is no different than Ed, playing with human lives for their experiments. Ed beats him up and reports his unethical experiment to the military, causing him to be arrested. He then locks himself up in the library for three days straight to find more information about the stone based on Marco's clues. Captain Hughes and Lieutenant Ross assist him, deducing that they might be unraveling a big mystery in the military related to Marco's assassination and the appearance of Lust and her mysterious group. Suddenly, General Hakuro walks in and tells them that the lab number 5 they are looking for is an abandoned cannery. Ed quickly heads there, then another military officer walks in to report about riots in Riol. Hughes is eager to deal with the situation, but the general tells him there is nothing to worry about. Ed, Al, and Wynn research the whole cannery to find nothing. Al begins to question if the stone and his body really exist. He assumes he is given a false memory, remembering Tucker's words. The brothers then fight. Winry stands up for Ed, telling Al that Ed sacrificed so much for him. Meanwhile, Hughes deciphers the location of the riots and their connection to the locations of the military lab. He deduces the actual location of lab number 5, but then Lust sneaks from behind and attacks him. He throws a dagger at her and runs away to a telephone box, contacting Colonel Mustang to report that the military is compromised. However, Colonel Mustang appears from behind and seemingly shoots Hughes dead. A troop suddenly comes to the cannery and escorts Ed to headquarters where he is treated like a criminal. From Mustang's lieutenant, Hawkeye, Ed learns that Hughes was murdered by Mustang and now his comrades are being watched or detained by the military. Mustang also let Tucker out, which puts Al in danger. Ed determines to break free and find the actual lab number 5, which is an unused prisoner of war camp. Lieutenant Ross has been waiting for Mustang there with a troop of soldiers. Mustang uses his alchemy to burn Ross alive, surprising the whole troop. Turns out Ross comes back alive and is actually Envy impersonating her. Mustang knows she is not the real Ross by her misplaced mole. Lust and Gluttony come in to join Envy. Mustang identifies their Uraburo tattoos, telling Ed that they are the homunculi, artificial humans created by alchemy who possess superpowers. They learn Envy poses as Mustang and frames him for Hugh's murder and Tucker's release. Gluttony attacks the remaining troops while Lust fatally injures Mustang. Unable to move further, Mustang instructs Ed to go after the homunculi and defeat them. Ed runs inside the camp to find Tucker holding Al and Winry hostage. He learns about the stone's true secret, it is transmuted using human souls, sacrificing the camp's prisoners' lives. Tucker aims to shoot Ed, but he is stabbed from the back by Lust. She then reveals herself to be working for General Hakuro. He aims to transmute artificial soldiers using the Philosopher's Stones and rule the world, but the newly awakened soldiers end up chasing after him. Ed, Al, Winry, Mustang, Hawkeye, and the Homunculi use their own abilities to defeat the artificial army. Then, Ed and Mustang go after Lust and Envy. Lust tells them the Homunculi cannot be killed since they are created by a Philosopher's Stone, acting as their hearts, that grants them healing abilities. However, Mustang mercilessly burns Envy multiple times until he seems to heal longer than expected. Mustang and Ed deduce that the homunculi have a limited number of regenerations before they can finally be killed. Mustang continues attacking Envy by his fire until he is defeated, while Ed defends himself from Lust's attacks that mainly come from her fingers. Al arrives to help protect Ed and conjures an earth wall that cuts through Lust's fingers, exposing her soft spot, allowing Colonel Mustang to defeat her, and takes her Philosopher's Stone. He gives it to Ed completing the brother's quest. Ed goes back to the Gate of Truth. Truth assumes Ed wants to trade the stone for Al's body, which appears as tall and skinny. However, Ed refuses the offer, acknowledging the stone's human sacrifice and not intending to use it. He promises Al that he will find another way to retrieve his body. Coming back to the human world, Ed embraces Al, who also agrees to stay in his current form and not sacrifice human lives to retrieve his body. Ed also, thanks Mustang and encourages him to expose the truth behind the military's scheme. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.